Today we're going to be talking about healing with the DNA. Uh, Saint Germain uh, did a lot to me last night, blew out my gallbladder, and so, but it was in a good way, <laughs> and uh, ended up being up quite a bit of the night and I was asking St. Germain what am I supposed to talk about because I didn't know and he said you're supposed to talk about healing with the DNA today and the DNA is quite interesting God, can you pop that up? I don't have a fingernail and so anyway boy something's happening I gotta go back. So we'll figure this out. Okay. So I'm gonna go back here. For some reason the screen is like not showing me much. Okay, so I wanna start the slideshow from the beginning again. This is interesting. Okay, so So, the, the lecture is on healing with the DNA. Now, it's quite interesting as I went through this this morning. This kind of shows the double helix. This shows a molecule of guanine. This is adenine. They kind of come together and they form what they call the chromosomes. And the chromosomes are in between a simplex of, of a double helix that, uh, like a ladder turned upon itself. And they found, believe it or not, that these uh, double helix have and can have pyramidal structure. Now this is a, a chromosome bound by a telomere. And when they divide, they open up and let out the chromosomes, and the chromosomes make different proteins, different materials, and they found that they can even form structures, which is fascinating. Uh, our DNA, believe it or not, also affects what happens on the planet. They found that as humans do things, the Earth responds like earthquakes, different things, like, you know, we've been uh, fracking in Oklahoma. And there's never been earthquakes in Oklahoma until we start fracking. Uh, also, up in the Dakotas, where they've been doing fracking, there's started to be earthquakes and such. And so, what the humans do affects not only our DNA, but the structure of our planet, which uh, is quite interesting. Now. What's the, you know, last week we talked a little bit about the pyramid and the pyramidal energies that were produced during creation. And they found that the DNA, if you get uh, those four strands and bring them down, let me go back a little bit. This structure, if you take and bend these arms down over, it makes an equilateral uh, triangle. And uh, they found that this triangle can actually uh, be formed and generate energy. And the scientists, about 15 years ago, took DNA, put it in a Petri dish, and they looked at it with spectrographs, all kinds of stuff, and they found it was producing energy. And they couldn't figure out how the DNA was producing energy. But it produces it from being in the pyramidal form, and when they took it out of the pyramid, it was still producing energy. And they were like, what the heck, you know? And they found that it connected and made little wormholes 
at the cap of the pyramid, even when it was gone, these wormholes were still there and they were bringing in energy from other dimensions. So quite fascinating stuff if you think about it. Now when St. Germain first started talking to me about the DNA a year and a half ago in, in uh, Reno, Nevada, he told me a whole bunch of stuff and I was just like overwhelmed. It was so much information. I, I didn't recall a lot of it and as time has gone on and he's come and visited me again, uh, he keeps reminding me what he was talking about, which is good because, uh, you know, it's interesting how we humans, we have a database that our brains can uh, focus upon and recall. Like, you know, when I went to medical school, I had to read 300 pages of very scientific information every night and just to keep up. And, you know, I was amazed how much I could recall for the tests because they would test on bits and pieces, things that we, you know, had no idea what they were gonna test us on. Now, when I started using intuition with the testing, I did much better on the tests because I drew on the energy of the universe so that I, I could uh, realize what this information was. And so it's quite fascinating how uh, knowledge can come through our DNA also from other dimensions. So the more DNA we have, the higher our ability comes to gather information through these pyramidal structures of our DNA. Now, uh, a lot of people go, well, you know, why do we need more DNA? Uh, it's interesting. Even Mona, after she got her 24 strands, she started being able to uh, contemplate and her intellect increased, right? And things you didn't understand before, you're understanding now. And that's pretty cool. And I've been trying to teach people this. You know, it's important that we evolve and get our DNA going. The original human beings, third dimensional beings, had 24 strands of DNA. Now, if you think about that, that's 12 times more than we have now, currently. Now, uh, an interesting thing about that is when you get that 12 strands, or excuse me, 12 double helix, think how much more information you're going to receive and uh, intellect will improve and increase 12 or more fold because you're accessing actually more than just one dimensional information, you're accessing 12 dimensions of information. Okay, gotta find where that's gonna, oh there we go. Changing the energy of DNA. Uh, there's people working at Oxford who uh, would put four strands of DNA, and now, you know, mind you, most humans only have two strands, uh, and they would put it together and they built pyramids out of these four strands. So they take a strand on each side and they lay them out and they actually made a pyramidal stru structure. Each strand makes up one triangular face. The edges of these triangles have open puzzle piece so sequences that bind to other edges of the triangle. As these edges meet, the triangles fold into the shape of a pyramid. They automatically, you know, as they put them together, they automatically fold into a pyramidal structure. And so, simply by mixing the right numbers of different strands together, the researchers have built trillions of pyramids in just seconds. So they automatically will go into these, so they added all these DNA uh, strands, put them in, and they made trillions of pyramids. Now, trillions, that's, you know, a thousand billion, pretty amazing in my opinion. Now they, they just started doing this in 2013. Uh, now what's interesting 
the scheme for the DNA pyramids, they become rigid structures that could be a starting point for making other more complex structures. To get these building blocks to assemble into more complex structures, the Oxford researchers again turned to the DNA. They incorporated loose strands into the structures with sequence designed to link those loose strands in neighboring pyramids so they could actually make, uh, they were creating objects. Isn't that interesting? Just out of the DNA. Oh, got to get they on, doing that. It on the computer? How they doing it? They were doing it with actual DNA, <laughs> which, which is amazing. Come on in. Uh, so the quadru quadruple helix DNA, they found that it existed in the human genome. Uh, genome. And 60 years after Cambridge researchers, th this is fascinating, you've heard of Watson and Crick? Have, you, have any of you heard? Well, I heard of them because in biology, we learned about Watson and Crick because they were the first ones that picked up the DNA clear back in 1906. And they discovered that the double helix DNA, the molecule of life, another team at the same UK university has published proof that four-stranded quadruple helix DNA also exists within the human genome. Isn't that interesting? And I just discovered this recently. Now, what St. Germain told me about this is that we are evolving. Now we can evolve faster by manifesting. So taking our minds and creating more DNA. Now, uh, they had never found this before. And plants, they're finding plants that have four-stranded DNA now that have never existed. They haven't been able to find it until just recently in the last five, six years. Now, the DNA is changing, but it's changing very slowly. Now, what St. Germain told me is that we need to get 144,000 of us, like it says in the, uh, the revelations of the Bible, 144,000 human beings getting 24 strands of DNA, and then it will create an energy, just like the DNA creates structures, it will create an energy that will create it in every one of us and we will evolve as human beings. Here's another interesting thing. Scientists at the California Institute of Technology kept themselves busy by folding DNA strands into many desired two-dimensional shapes, including the DNA smiley. Now this is kind of interesting, because <laughs> they took these, you know, DNA is microscopic. You have to use an electron microscope to even find and look and see what the structure is. So, these guys just, this is made out of DNA. They structured this through their intent. So we can take our intent or our mind power and create, you know, they were just bored and they start creating all these different things. And there's more than just the DNA smiley they created. So, uh, quite fascinating. Now this next part is pretty incredible. And, uh, you know, I'd heard about the, uh, nanobots about 10 years ago. And they were talking about these little robots that could go in and they had little saws and, and jaws and things and they could take and bore holes into clogged arteries in the heart. And, you know, when I first read about it, I was pretty impressed. I thought, you know, they're making these little teeny robots that are small enough to fit in the corpuscle, in with the corpuscles, the blood, and, and the capillaries to clean them up. And I thought that was pretty remarkable. This is an actual picture of DNA. This is DNA that they put together and they, they programmed these nanobots to walk on certain combinations of the DNA. So this, this is the, the nanobot. It has little legs and it interacts with the chromosomes and DNA structure and they can program it to do certain things. 
Now, I was just absolutely dumbfounded, and, and they're doing this currently. If you think about this, this is, this is pretty amazing stuff. These little nanobots have structure that they can actually program every bit of it and program it to do uh, whatever they desire it to do. And so they have made these so they interact with the DNA. And you know, a lot of them tell us, oh, it's all cancer research because we're going to eventually program these nanobots to deliver uh, substance to cancer cells. Okay? And that's what they're saying to us that they're doing. And so, an interdisciplinary ah, inter group of researchers from Columbia, the University of Michigan, Caltech, and Arizona State University has created and programmed a nanoscale robot that can decide which way to move along a specially prepared DNA organic structure. Uh, sorry about the, the typos. I just did this this morning. Uh, the technology that uses these spider-like molecular robots to intellectually interact with their environment, that intelligently interact with their environment, uh, may lead one day to precise cancer therapies that would identify tumor cells and destroy the DNA in those cells. Now, if they can program it to do it <coughs> To cancer cells, what do you think they can program it to do it to our cells? <laughs> kind of interesting stuff. Now, uh, one of the things I found that St. Germain had told me was that there are scientists are, who are also creating, instead of a, a organic, uh, organic means carbon-based, and all life on planet Earth is carbon-based life. But what the scientists are creating now is silicon based life. Instead of having a carbon atom, they put a silicon atom in. And silica is a very abundant uh, molecule here on planet Earth. And silica dioxide, for instance, makes up most of the crystals that we have in this room and the crystals can interact with our carbon-based molecules and create a vibration that actually can heal them. You can also pro program the silicon to harm carbon-based molecules and beings. Quite interesting. And so they're creating nanobots that are made in, not out of carbon-based, but out of silicon-based materials. Fascinating. So, uh, what does that have to do with us? Well, they found they can actually create uh, life out of silicon based molecules. Quite fascinating because the energy is there and they, they have found they can use that and use nanobots to create whatever they desire to create, especially these, these uh, small nanobots that can actually. Uh, integrate into the DNA. So uh, DNA nanobots, this is a, a thing that came out on the internet talking about uh, this professor Ido Bachelet of Israel's Barlin University confirmed that nanobots capable of fighting cancer cells no, long, no longer is a thing of science fiction. Indeed, they're doing it this year. Go ahead. What's the nanobot that is programmed to do its job? What do they do with that? Like, is it just keep hanging out in your DNA? Well, what they found is one nanobot can affect trillions of cells because they don't just kind of move slowly, they move very quickly mm -hmm. and they can change cell to cell to cell to cell, DNA to DNA to DNA. Go ahead. Well, in the, in the, the 21st strand, they're going to all the toxins and mm -hmm. petrochemicals and nanobots. Yes. So that's the bad nanobots. Yes. Now, <laughs> the thing I didn't realize, you know, because St. Germain included nanobot information. 
and even had me talk about artificial intelligence and nanobots. And I, I was like, 